If you will, turn with me this morning to Luke chapter 4. Amen. When you find it, you will stand for the reading of God's Word, giving Him all the reverence, not myself. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, starting there. And then if you will, go ahead and find your place in Hebrews 13. Then we're going to turn there real quick too. I've got one little tiny page of, of, of an outline today. And hopefully that will let me preach for about an hour or so. <laughs> uh, Luke chapter 4, we can find it, say amen. amen. Verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And I want you to focus on this right here. To preach deliverance to the captives. Right, no shame. To preach deliverance to the captives. Did you get that church? One more time. To preach deliverance to the captives. Hallelujah. And recovering a sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. In verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And turn over to Hebrews 13 real quick. Give you a moment. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3. When you find it, just say amen. amen. It says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. I'm going to read that one more time. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Yes. I just want to minister for a few moments this morning. The Lord be my help. Remembering them that are bound. Remembering them that are bound. If you will, lift your hands towards heaven with me this morning. Help me pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God. Lord, I must have the anointing power of the Holy Ghost, God, to preach this this morning, for I cannot yeah. do it without you, Lord. God, I just pray that you'd help me to say yes. everything that yes, you've placed Lord. in my heart, God, throughout my time of preparation. Let your word go forth and penetrate the very hearts of your people, God. Lord, above all, let your will be done in this place, having your way. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen and amen. 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 Remembering them that are bound. The Lord kind of laid this on my heart a few, probably a couple days ago, really. And I didn't really know if I was going to get to bring this or not, because sometimes God lays things on my heart early, whenever I know I'm going to be ministering, and sometimes He lays it on me the night of, or, or the day, I mean the day before. Mm -hmm. And so I never know exactly what it is God wants me to bring. And so this is something He laid on my heart probably two days before today. And um, I've actually got a few friends that I know that they are in prison today. And one of them messaged me about two days ago, or two, three days ago. And he sent me this scripture, Hebrews 13 and 3, and it just leapt all over me. And I knew right then this was, this was from God because this is what God wants me to bring today. And so I'm going to be dealing, we've, we sang some songs this morning about chains and breaking chains. And, and so I've got, I've got an illustration I'm going to be sharing this morning here in a few moments. And, but we're going to be dealing with people that are bound today. I'm not just talking about in physical prisons and physical chains, but, but mainly spiritually. Because as we look across this nation, as we look across the world, I believe we can see that there is a lot of bondage yes. that is going on all around us. And there's different types of bondages. There's different types of chains. There's different types of things like this. I'm going to get into some of this in a few moments. But I want us to remember them that are bound. And I'm going to bring this out. But for an introduction this morning, i got an illustration. That I really want us to get this morning, church. Holding in my hand, what you can see is what looks like just a normal chain that we might would use to haul something or to keep something strapped down or whatever it might be that we would use it for today. But somewhere in the world, somebody is chained up with these things oh, right here. Right. Yes. With their hands and their shackles on their feet. And some of them might even be chained up against a post somewhere. We don't, we don't know what's going on over right. in different countries. Right. As we look at this chain this morning, it's really sad when you start beginning to think about bondage, church. And I really want you to get this in your spirit this morning because it really is sad what it is that the Lord wants to bring out this morning. I want you to grasp it. But as you look at this chain this morning, what is it that you see? 
What is it that you think of? What is it that comes to your mind? Other than holding down. Somebody, go ahead. It's okay this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to speak out. But what, what comes to your mind when you think about chains? Strength. Strength. And that could be positive or negative, right? Yes. Somebody else this morning. Just real quick. How many lakes are in it? That's good. Somebody else. You ain't going to go very far with that on you. All right. Well, this chain right here... I think we measure almost seven feet tall. I'm six foot three, so this is about probably seven foot tall, roughly, maybe almost eight, probably a little over seven feet. But this chain, I want you to hold this real quick. Just when you hold it, tell me what you feel. What? It's heavy. Exactly, church. And this is what I'm wanting to bring out, and I might use you for an illustration, if you don't mind, in a few moments. Yeah. But I'm gonna carry these chains around for a minute because. As we begin to look at this chain, we begin to study it out, we begin to see how it's made and how it's formed and how it's fashioned and everything about it, church. The first thing we notice is that it's made up of several different kinds of links. I mean, one big long chain, is, I mean, it's not, it just don't start as a chain. It starts with one little link yeah. at a time. Right. And then that link connects to another link and to another link until you get this big long chain that's dragging behind you, church. And I want you to get something this morning as we look at this in the spiritual aspect. Each link represents something. Yes. And most of the time it doesn't represent anything positive. Church is normally a negative representation. Yes. Yeah. And each one of these links could represent different strongholds and different struggles uh -huh. within the lives of people today, uh -huh. church. Uh -huh. And just to name a few, one link could be homosexuality, church. Uh -huh. And then that link might connect to drug addiction. And then that link might connect to alcoholism. And then that link might connect to pornography addiction. Yeah. That link might connect to anger issues. That link might connect to gambling addiction. Uh -huh. This link might connect to some kind of, of pride. pride. There you go. So we can just start naming these links, church, right. until all of a sudden we've formed a big long chain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you got a seven foot chain out of the church and you start naming each kind of link that could be attaching itself to one another. Attaching itself to us, church. Brother, if you will. Now this is for presentation purpose only. I promise he's in no danger this morning. <laughs> but what I'm going to do, brother, if you don't mind, I think you're strong enough to handle this here. I'm going to put this around you this way. We'll come back through. Like this. You wrap it. And then keep your arms down. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but you too big. Put it right there. That'll work right there. Just keep that just like that for a minute. Now, now it seems like this would be nothing because these chains are open. He could just bust out of them. Right? But here's, here's the catch, church. Here's what the devil tries to trick you with. Right here. Oh, okay. See, the devil, not only does he try to throw these different types of links on us and form these chains around us, but then he puts a seal on it. A seal of destruction, a seal of bondage, to where you cannot get out. And then you're standing there, church, and, and you seem hopeless. And you're bound up. Try to move, brother. Try to move. Try to walk around for a minute. It feels heavy, doesn't it? It's kind of, kind of irritating, ain't it? Yeah. And you feel like you're trapped and maybe getting a little bit claustrophobic or whatever it might be, right? Yeah. And it seems like there's no hope, church, because he's got all these different chains upon him and these different links. Oh. And, and he's troubled and distressed and yeah. maybe fearful a little bit. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. How, to get them off. How to get him off. What he's going to do about it, church. Right. And that's exactly where the devil wants us to be this morning. He wants us to be bound up in a chain. It doesn't matter what the links are, church. We all got different links we fight with every day. But what happens is we allow them links to start connecting together until it's formed a chain around this church and we can't break free and we can't get loose and we can't praise God anymore. We can't get our hands up anymore because we're bound by a chain. We can't dance in the spirit anymore because our feet are shackled. We can't do nothing because we're chained up by the struggles of this life yep. that come yeah. against us. 
And the devil puts a padlock on it and seals it to where we cannot get out. Oh, but I've come this morning to tell somebody. I said, I've come this morning to tell somebody. Jesus holds the keys to that padlock. I said, there's the keys to that padlock, church. Jesus has it. And what Jesus loves to do, he likes to walk up to his church. He likes to put that key in there. And unlock that, shake them chains off, brother. Take them off. Go on. Yeah. Stop. Start talking on them. Let the devil know that, hey, I'm not going to be bound by these chains any longer because Jesus holds the key. Come on, church. But we don't need these. You sit down now, brother. Thank you. But we don't need. You're free, Carl. We don't need these chains, church. And so whatever it is, church, whatever chains, that we Ooh. might be having in this life. You just, uh -huh. you just trust God to bring you the key and unlock yes. that Amen. seal that the devil puts on All right. All right. Yeah. You just take that lock and you just get it out of the way, church. Yeah. Amen. Forget about them chains. Amen. Forget about them chains. Yes, sir. They ain't nothing now. What are they, do? what are they doing now? Amen. They ain't no good, church. Yeah. Let them go. Amen. Let them go. Leave them alone. Because the, what that means is that Jesus has made you free. Amen. Amen. Now what would have happened? I want you to get there. This is good. The Bible says for whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. What would have happened if Jesus would have unlocked that padlock? But Brother Carl never shook them chains off. Uh -huh. There's a difference. I want you to understand this. The King James, that's why I like the King James sometimes. It says, if the Son therefore, John 8, 36, if the Son, speaking of Jesus, therefore shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. Amen. Notice it didn't say if he sets you free. He says if he makes you free. Amen. Because Jesus can unlock the padlock and set him free. But it's up to Brother Carl to shake the chains off and be yes. made yes. free in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. You can open up the prison door and make a way for people to get out. But if they don't step out, uh -huh. then they're still bound, church. Yes. Yes. So Jesus makes us free. He don't just set us free. He makes us free. So he goes ahead and he helps us take the chains off, brother. Because sometimes we might not be able to take them off on our own. So he goes ahead and helps us take them off. All right. And that's how he makes us free this morning, church. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Give him some praise, church. Come on, give him some praise. Good word. I want us to concern ourselves with those out there that are in bondage. How many of you got family members out there that might be struggling with something today? we got to call it out by name, but, but you can just see that there's a struggle in their life, maybe many struggles in their lives, yeah. that they are bound by. The enemy has them held captive with, uh -huh. and they're bound, and you can almost see the chain spiritually that's just bound upon them. I want us to remember those people, church. We need to concern ourselves with those people. Right. Too many times we, we see people that are struggling, and we see people that's got addictions, or we see people that's got issues, and the first thing we want to do is go, Amen. That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord. We want to just turn our face to them. Yeah. Turn up our nose to them like we're better than them. As if we hadn't been set free before in our life. Yeah. As if we ain't never had Jesus to make us free. Yeah. As if we ain't never carried chains of our own, church. That's right. Sometimes when we get saved and on fire for God, we forget Remind where us. it was that God brought us from. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we forget exactly what it was that we was chained up by. And so we get to a place where we feel like we're high and mighty in God. Oh God. We're self-righteous in our own ways. And we turn our nose to people that are struggling with things, church. Oh, yeah, and we don't want to be around them. Kyle, oh, them people are just trouble, man. We don't want to be around them. Them guys are on drugs. and Man, them guys drink. And that. I don't want to be around them kind of people, man. Just, they'll be all right. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. They'll be all right. And we don't want to, we don't want to be around people like that, church. But we need to concern ourselves with people like that. Remember them that are in bonds just as much as we once were in bonds. That's what Amen. that verse says. Yes. Because they're part of the body. Some of, them are, some of them are Christians trying to serve God. Church, I know there's sinners out there that are not with God. But there's even Christians today that even though they're trying to serve God, even though they love God and they're trying to do everything they can to, to live for God, they still might be struggling with things, church. They still might be bound by some things. And you know what? There was a time in my life, church, I, I, I'll be honest with you about this one today. I didn't think it was possible for a true, born-again Christian to still struggle with such things. I just didn't. Because when I truly got saved, gave my life to God, got filled with the Holy Ghost, God 
brought me instantaneous deliverance yeah. from the things I was bound by. Right. Yeah. And I didn't struggle with them things anymore. I was able to walk away from it. But see, there are still people today that, that it's not an instantaneous deliverance. Amen. Sometimes there's still struggle there and, and yes. sanctification becomes a, an ongoing process in that aspect, church. Yeah. It's always an ongoing process. Right. But I mean, and that deliverance, or an ongoing deliverance. Yeah. But I've come to learn today that there are still people that are even in the body of Christ that I would consider a brother or sister in Christ yes. that are still struggling today. Oh, bound by things. I've got family members that's been in the church for years and, and, and I've seen God use them. But still smoke cigarettes or maybe, you know, chew tobacco, whatever it is. Church, I, I don't know. I'm just making up things right now. But, but as an example, and still see them struggle with things, but yet still feel the anointing power of God flow right. through them. Yes. It's because right. God is still helping those people right. get through these chains. Yeah. 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 But we need to concern ourselves. That's why I want us to get this. Remember them that are in bonds. Yeah. Remember them that are bound. Have an open mind to those people. Be worrying about them people. Focus on them people. Brand. Pray for them people. Yeah. Be concerned yeah. about them. There you go. Because they need us. Yes. Us that 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 we've been through some things. How many of you have been through some things, church? How many how many of you God's brought brought you through some things? You're the exact people that other people like that need to be a, a testimony of what God can do for you. And we need to remember those people, church. Yes, we do. We need to stop turning our nose up to people. It's because we see that they've got some kind of struggle. There's people in this life I'd rather not be around to. Church, I get that. There are sometimes we do need to use wisdom and and and, and, and know that well. It might not be safe to be around them people. Uh -huh. It might not be, you know, very wise because it could cause trouble. We understand that. Yes. But some people just choose to stay away from people like that, church, because of their own arrogance and pride. <laughs> the next thing I really want us to understand, church, this is a tough one. We've got to quit condoning other people's chains and bondage and Amen. struggles. Amen. We got to quit condoning it, church. That word condone means just to kind of turn away from it and, and just, well, I know you're doing it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to touch on that. It's, it's okay. You know, it'd be, like, it'd be like if you were struggling with something, I knew it. And instead of helping you, yeah. instead of saying anything to you about it to help you get away from it, it's just like, well, that's okay, brother. You know, God, I love you anyway. And have that, that sympathetic attitude about it to where we never say, brother, if, if you don't, Trust God to get away from this and, and, and let us pray for you. And It's yeah. going to be bring destruction. Yeah. We've got to understand that this morning, oh, yeah. church. We don't want to hurt anybody. Amen. We don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. But if there's a struggle or a stronghold that's on your life, it's going to lead to your destruction if you don't do something about it. Amen. And so quit turning your head to that stuff. Well, if you've got family members today that you know for a fact are, are living in some kind of darkness and they are bound by some kind of demonic spirit or whatever it might be, church, quit turning your face to it. Love them. Love them. Amen. And love, love them and, and help Lord. them understand yes. their need yes. for deliverance in their yes. life. Yes. yes. Quit just saying that. Ah, they'll find it one day. It, 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 you know, Jesus, it's still, it, Jesus is coming back, but you know he's, he's still not here yet, so he, it's okay. Quit condoning it, church. Right. If there's struggles in your own life, come on now. If you've got struggles in your own life today, uh -huh. quit condoning it within yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Quit looking in the mirror and saying, well, there's worse things. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, but hey, so and so down the road is doing that. So I'm, I'm still okay. Quit condoning yeah. it within yourself, church. Get yeah. it right. Preach it. Amen. I'm not here to condemn anybody. Because all of us have got something that we probably should fix within our own selves. Yes. And that's why Paul said to daily examine yourselves. Yes. Amen. Daily Amen. examine yourselves. Amen. Yeah. And so that's what we must do. But, but when we begin to condone, uh -huh. instead of examine, we're condoning, church. Uh -huh. Then we're going to continue to fall uh -huh. to the same old, same old bondage. Uh -huh. and captivity. Yeah. Every single time, church, we're going to continue carrying them chains. More chains. Amen. And see, the Bible says that when you find deliverance from something, and then you turn back to it. Oh, no. It says seven worser things will come upon you. Yes. And so, adding some more links to your change. Uh -huh. 
Maybe adding a couple more padlocks to it, too. Yeah. You just never know, spiritually speaking, church. Right. And so, the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty All right. wherewith Christ has made us free. Thank you, Lord. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Yes. What's that mean? Walk in freedom, church. Yes. Don't get yourselves caught right back up in the same old, same old things again, church. Amen. But walk in freedom. Yeah. Walk in the liberty that God has granted us through His grace and through His mercy and through His compassion and love and forgiveness in our Amen. lives. Church. Amen. Walk in that freedom. Yes. Yes. Quit getting yourself tangled up again. And this same old thing. You know how easy it is to get tangled up in this kind of stuff? Yeah. This is something that can, can just continuously keep tangling us up if we'll let it. Yeah. But he says, be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Right. But put them chains off and get away from the church. Man. And walk in freedom. Yes. Many times, church, we look at physical for a few moments. Physical bondage. We see that Peter, we look at Peter's story whenever he was in, in prison and they was praying for him and then it said that he was behind like two or three different doors yes. and also shackled to the wall and, and you know, we can see physical bondage even within the apostles' lives, church. We see Paul and Silas yes. when they were thrown in jail, church. They praised their way out of them shackles. All right. yeah. Yeah. You know? Oh, man, that just brought something to me. Thank you, Lord. I remember one time I was praying with one of my real close friends, real good brother in Christ. He just kept struggling with something. He got it, and the devil put a chain around his neck that constantly made him feel that he was turned over to a reprobate mind. And we know that that's possible because the Bible speaks on it. Yeah. But for whatever reason, he just felt he couldn't get past it. It was just an attack from the enemy. A chain that was wrapped around his neck that was sucking the very life out of him, thinking that God had turned his back on him, and that God didn't love him anymore, and that God didn't want nothing to do with him anymore. And I used to pray with him, and I used to try to tell him, for you to even be concerned about this means that God still loves you. Right. Because if, you, if, God, if God cuts you off, you wouldn't even care anymore. That's true. That's you it. just continue with whatever. Good point. But for you, to, for you to even be concerned about this, it means that God's still with you. Yes, sir. But just, when I was around him week in and, and, and week out, he would talk to me about it. And just bring up the same thing. We'd pray about it, and he'd feel like he'd get a little bit of victory over it, and then about a week or so later, he allowed that chain to get right, right back around his neck. He, he'd talk to me again, and now, I just feel like God's cut me off, man. And, and it sounds funny, and I'm, I'm not making fun of him. But I, I got to a point to where I, I, I got frustrated about it. Because I'm like, brother, why are we going to keep doing with this same thing over and over? Week in and week out. And we've done prayed about this. We've done talked about it. We've done looked up Scripture on it. You know you're fine. Why are you going to keep lying to yourself to go right back to the same old thing? Uh -huh. That's one of them things, church. Be not entangled again. He allowed himself. This is just an example, church. But he allowed himself to keep being tangled back up in that into that lie yes, yes. that the devil was trying to put in his mind. Yes. That he was cut off from God. Why? Why? Why would he keep struggling with that? Because he just wasn't wasn't willing to let go of the chains in his life, church. Right. He wasn't willing to find that freedom yeah. that God has for him. Yeah. He just wanted to stay up in bondage. And then I. Several times I prayed with him. I said all that to say this. The, one of the very last times I actually prayed with him about this, God laid it on my heart. I said, brother, I said, I feel like God just wanted me to share with you. You're going to have to praise your way out of this. All right. Amen. You have to praise your way out of it. We can pray about it. We can talk about it. We can think about it, whatever. But you're going to have to praise your way out of this situation. That's right? good. Yes. Yes. And we began, we began to pray. I began to praise God with it. We started just crying out to Jesus and thanking God and Freedom. praising Him and, praising and, and, and worshiping Him. We got down on our faces on the floor and I prayed with Him and we was praising God and we were singing and we was, because he's, he's musically inclined too. God has blessed Him musically too. He plays instruments and He sings and got a beautiful voice and God uses Him and I've sensed the anointing in Him. And so we got down on our, on our faces before the Lord and we just sang out praises to Him. And I believe that He finally 
at that moment had found victory to that. And, and you know, I think for the longest time, he, he's been great about it. Praise God. Well, may help others. Amen. Church, sometimes we got to praise our way out of our shadows. There you go. Mm -hmm. There's an old song. Uh, some of you might know the old uh, worship group, Mary Mary was their name. Yeah. They sang this song called uh, Shake the uh, Shackles Off My Feet So I Can Dance because I just want to praise Him. Uh -huh. And sometimes, church, we just got to praise our way out of our shackles. All right. When we can't do nothing else, just praise God. Because that's what Paul and Silas did. They praised their way out of their yeah, shackles, yeah, church. Yeah, yeah, and if yeah, they yeah. can do it, we can do oh, it. Yeah. Right. Yes. I said, if they can do it, we can do it. Yes. Right. And sometimes, church, we might just need to, before we do anything, before we even sing our opening chord, we might just need to stand up and just dance in the Spirit oh, yeah. and just take off them shackles. Yeah. So that way, for the rest of the service, we can be free right. in Christ Jesus to worship yeah. Him and to praise Him and to receive on, what He on. might have for us, church. Yeah. 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 We got to walk in our freedom. Yeah. All right. And we could continue, church, to, to look at other examples in the Word. And, and we all probably know people that, that has a testimony like I just shared with you with my brother, yeah. one of my good friends. And, and we got to use these as, as testimonies to know that, that there's a way that we can get out of the captivity that we're in. All right. There's a way. There's nothing in this life, in this world, that is that great that we, we should stay bound by it, church. Right. That we should be in chains because of it. Yeah. I've tried different things in this life, church. I've, I've been involved in worldly, lusty, lustly, fleshly things. I, I have. I haven't always lived for God. I haven't always been a preacher of the gospel. I haven't always sang praises to God. I used to be just as much of a sinner as, as the Apostle Paul said. He was the chiefest of sinners. Well, I was too. Uh -huh. I believe that. But there comes a time, church, where we got to realize that it doesn't matter what link it is. Ain't none of, ain't, ain't none of these links inside this chain worth dying and going to hell over. That's right. Amen. There ain't none of these links inside this chain that's worth staying bound up and held captive by That's right. while we're on this earth. Amen. Because Amen. all it will do is just drag us down to hell. Yes, sir. Amen. If you're, oh man, that'll preach. If you're in chains on this earth, then chains will drag you all the way to hell. Yes, yep. That's Amen. right. That's what it is. And so church, I, I want us to, and this is, this is real short today. I could have preached for 45 minutes an hour maybe, but, but I, don't, I don't want to pound this too much because this is a sensitive subject. And, and, and one thing I've learned as a young minister, I, didn't, I haven't always known this, but some things when, you, when you're dealing with sensitive subjects like this, it's not easy to stand up here and tell you, quit condoning your problems. It's not easy to stand up here and tell people that. It's not easy to say, hey, listen, man. It's not easy. It's a very sensitive subject. Right. So one thing I have learned as, as a young minister is, is when it comes to sensitive areas like this, hit it, but don't just pound it to the ground. Thank you, Lord. Don't don't just don't just because I can I can get my Bible and, and beat everybody with it and, and there was times that I used to when I was younger. I mean just I I thought that's what it was about. Just grab this Bible and just beat the mess out of people with it, man. You know, but, but thank God for his his wisdom in my life because I'm not nowhere near as as, as judgmental and stuff like like I once was church. And so these subjects they need to be treated as, as sensitive things. And so, so that's, that's, that's what I've got today, church. Good. So you will stand with me. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Good word, brother. Amen. Amen. The key thing that I want us to, to get today is we must remember them that are, that are bound. Please remember those kinds of people. Everybody, when I say that, immediately came to their mind people that they know that, I'm, that, that sure. goes along with this. Immediately. As soon as I say that, remember those. You automatically think of people. So whoever came to your mind when I said that, remember those people that are that are in bond today. Amen. I'm not talking about a physical prison. I know that we've probably got family members that, that's there too. Okay? And, and 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 you know, that's that's a that's another struggle. But I'm talking about spiritually today, church. Because there's so many spiritual strongholds that are on people's life today that, that nobody wants to see those kind of people fall into destruction like that because of those things, church. So please. Remember those people that are bound. 
Preach deliverance to them, church. Jesus said, preach deliverance to the captives. <coughs> now, we can't make them free. We can't set them free. But deliverance, let me see. The deliverance just is simply the action of being rescued or set free. Right. Well, Jesus is our refuge today. Yes, he is. Amen. So Amen. preach Jesus to them, church. Amen. Give them Jesus. Yes. Give them an opportunity to find rescue from the, from the chains that's holding them back, church. Amen. And if you will, just let's just pray this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, this was a short word today, God, but I pray that you've allowed these points to, to push through, God, and, and to touch the hearts of your people today. God, I just ask that you would just right now, Lord, deal with the people today, God, that, that they would just be able to remember anyone that they might know that might be bound by chains yeah. in their life, God, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it might be, God. And let us, Lord, give us something that we can give to them, God. Let, give us a fresh word for them. Give us something that we can reach out and, and present them a rescue, God. Present them Jesus in such a way that they will understand their need for deliverance, God. Help us to preach deliverance to the captives, yes. Lord, that they might recover from those chains and bust free, God, and find yes. freedom in Christ. Yes. Lord God, that's what we need today, Lord Jesus. Right. And God, we just give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.